Lewis Hamilton found an unusual competitor in his new teammate George Russell, and it seems like the younger Briton isn't willing to let go soon. However, there is a huge certainty that what is going on right now in 2023 is part of a huge master plan by the seven-time world champion, and he's been deliberately letting Russell have a better go at the W14 and with everything in Mercedes. With this in mind, is there a possibility that Hamilton's sneaky games will enable him to take the reins over at Mercedes once they build a championship winning car? Let's find out. Russell has managed to outperform Hamilton in his first year with Mercedes back in 2022, and it seems like that has caught the world by storm. Although the seven-time world champion managed to pick up the pace in the second half of the season, and be far more competitive than he was back in the first half, that wasn't enough, and Russell was the one taking the only Mercedes victory in 2022. Many have attributed this dominance of Russell to the fact that he was used to riding a bad car in Williams. So when Mercedes managed to produce a car that has troublesome manners, but is far faster than Williams, that was something Russell could work on much better than Hamilton could. This is something that Hamilton himself said, with a seven-time world champion adding that while he enjoys the sport and loves every single bit of it, he doesn't want to drive cars that are not where they are supposed to be according to last year's plan. Mercedes had a lot in store for 2023, and that's why we've hoped that Hamilton and Russell could be more competitive with the rest of the grid. Although it didn't seem like that in the first race, the Silver Arrows have picked up the pace and managed to deliver some strong results in Bahrain and Australia, with the latest event seeing Hamilton finish P2 and hold off Alonso for the entirety of the race. But nonetheless, it was the seven-time world champion who lost three times during the qualifying session this season. And hadn't it been for Russell's reliability issue in Australia, it's evident that he would have given his teammate a run for his money for that P2 position. One thing is for sure, while we are more than happy to see Mercedes improving itself bit by bit, there's still so much work to be done to catch up to Red Bull. But now that the team is awaiting the new design in Imola, this is a mission that can be completed in 2023. And this is when Hamilton could strike the strongest, as his experience in the sport is by far greater than Russell's. The older Briton has been constantly making statements about the car's preferences, such as having too strong of a front end or not having enough rear downforce, as well as complaining about the cockpit's narrowness and how he feels like he's sitting on the front wheels while driving it. All of this brings one thing to a conclusion. Hamilton doesn't love the W14. But could his statements towards George be biased and made towards his greater plan to dominate yet again in Mercedes? We were warned earlier last year by Nico Rosberg that the only thing that Hamilton hates the most is losing to a teammate, with the German driver being the one to take the title away from the Briton in 2016. However, Hamilton seems to have found a very interesting tactic and approach to Russell's dominance, according to Tom Clarkson, who is an FIA press conference and F1 Nation podcast host. Apart from Hamilton's complaints about the W14, he's constantly given Russell the opportunity to talk to the media after qualifying or after the race. And this has caused some raised eyebrows as to why Hamilton would let his younger teammate be the spokesperson of the team. Clarkson believes there's a very sneaky nature behind this, as he went on to add, in the press conference in Australia after qualifying, they'd qualified second and third in Melbourne, Max of course on pole. And every time a question was posed to both of the Mercedes drivers, Lewis was quite happy for George to answer the question. He almost became the spokesperson for the team in that press conference, and I was interested as to why Lewis was happy to just sit back and let that happen. I don't know whether he's sort of keeping his powder dry. Is he trying to sort of give him a sort of false hope of being the dominant person, and then he's going to really hit him hard where it matters on the stopwatch later on? It is a very interesting scenario if you think about it, and Hamilton is definitely the kind of driver that would have something like this on his mind. After all, you don't win seven championships by playing the role of a good Samaritan. And the fact that the team didn't listen to him when they were supposed to in terms of the no-pod side-pod design speaks volumes about whether or not these actions of his could be legitimate ones. Damon Hill also supported Clarkson's opinion about this, saying that Formula 1 drivers are competitive, but apart from that, they're also political, and you need to be aware of rising forces or rising empires within the team. George, for one, has made a strong statement about himself and is definitely a valued asset to the team. But at the same time, the younger Briton is the one that has to do all the hard work, and maybe Lewis doesn't. Continuing to speak about this scenario, Hill added, Mercedes know what they've got with Lewis, and they know that given half a sniff of a chance, he's going to be back on top form and can deliver those extraordinary races. They know that George can do that too, but he's yet to prove all that. So I think Lewis is very good, and will suss all this out, and then he'll be sitting there thinking, well, okay, I'll let you do all the hard work, George, because it's exhausting doing all this. 
George is also the director of GPDA, so he's got a big workload. George, he's taken on quite a lot, but I think Lewis's strategy has always been to remove as many distractions as possible and leave time for downtime and clarity. If there's one thing that we can say for the F1 Sport, it's that it doesn't lack commitment on every level. The drivers have to stay in the best possible shape, both physically and mentally, for every race weekend. And on top of that, they might have some other activities like Russell does with a GPDA. So that can take a toll on your mental focus. George is young and he can take care of his mind and body right now. But with Hamilton trying to let his teammate have a go at everything, there's a high possibility that he's playing the wear and tear game with his younger compatriot as he awaits for the crops of Russell's tear to grow and reap off them later in the season. At this point, Mercedes have promised to build the car on the positive side only, meaning that from everything they've learned in the previous year and the first couple of races in 2023, there's nothing that could go worse for them. As Wolf said, the team built a car that had too strong of a rear end last year, but too strong of a front end this year, so they're now working towards finding the balance between these two characteristics of the car. And when they do, Hamilton will be a much happier man. If there is something that we've learned about Russell in the previous year, and so far in 2023, it's that he's definitely the type of guy that Mercedes can count on if they need a leader. Obviously, Hamilton has yet to sign a contract with Mercedes for the next couple of seasons, and even if he does, there isn't too big of a chance that he'll race deep into his 40s. We do hope that he'll choose the path that Alonso has chosen, but according to his statement, there isn't much hope for us that we'll see him being present for more than two years. That leaves Mercedes with one thing having to take care of and nurture Russell. With how things are currently going in Mercedes and if Russell feels like he's being used just to be torn down for Hamilton to win races and potentially have a go at the eighth record-breaking championship, the young Briton wouldn't be happy with the Silver Arrows and could potentially demand a trade somewhere else. Russell has likely realized that he is the future of the team. And while he's yet to prove himself that he can bring the value that Hamilton did for the Silver Arrows, the results are definitely here. He outperformed Hamilton by 35 points in 2022, was the only pole sitter and race winner for the team in the troublesome year, and is looking stronger and stronger with different characteristics of the car. So, if Hamilton wants to play the long game, he needs to understand that Russell may not be the best opponent that he would have hoped for, given the fact that he handles everything that's being thrown at him pretty decently. One thing that we have to wait and see though, is whether these handles by Russell will take a toll on his performance. So far, he's looking like he's in the form of his life. And how wouldn't he, when you can deliver such great results in your first two years with a team that has taken a downslope in its overall performance? But if there's any driver out there that can turn things around on his own, that is Lewis Hamilton, which is why Russell needs to be very careful now that Mercedes is bringing a lot to the table in terms of car upgrades. So for Lewis to win a potential eighth championship, he doesn't only need a good car for it, he'll also need to beat his young talent teammate, George Russell. With this in mind, what do you think about Mercedes' potential battle between Russell and Hamilton? Do you think that Hamilton has what it takes to take down Russell's current reign at Mercedes? Let us know in the comments below.